in magnificent style. As they come up the line, it's Bill Reef the winner. This must be a very good coat indeed. Ian, this year is the 50th anniversary of the birth of the great Mill Reef and the Dubai duty-free Mill Reef Stakes is fast approaching. It must be a, a great honour, first of all, that Newbury have named a race after your great racehorse, Mill Reef. Yes, I, I love it. It's, it's, um, it's very nice that it's at Newbury, you know, where um, he performed once and um, it's our local course and my favourite course. So. Do you still get that buzz when you go back to, to Newbury now, for example, for the Dubai Duty Free Mill Reef and think that he, you see his name and yes, does it all I come do, back? Yes, I do. I, I, I get quite a buzz out of it, yeah. And we know that you, you go every year, you present that trophy as well, you, you see some, some great horses winning the race. Do you, do you, do you, can you go, de go there and, and relax and, and just enjoy the experience and enjoy the day when you go back oh, yes. there to Newbury? Yes, definitely. The, the, the race, the over six furlongs for these, these two-year-olds, you had a horse who, who won over six furlongs as a two-year-old that, that developed and went on to be a middle-distance horse, but we don't necessarily associate that with winners of the race, and I suppose we didn't associate that with Mill Reef initially. He was a, he was a quick no. horse as a youngster, wasn't he? But look Very what he turned so. out to do. Uh, yes, as, as I've said, I, I think I, I didn't expect him to be anything other than a brilliant two-year-old. You know, he was the fastest thing I've ever seen going around the field out here. I can remember the first proper gallop he had, and uh, it was up on our left-hand side, and um, I said to John, who was riding him, John Hallam, his lad, I said, look, just join the other horse and just let him go astride faster. That's how I put it. Let him just go astride faster. And suddenly he put 20 lengths between himself and Aldi, who was his lead horse, who was quite a useful horse. And I said, John, I've told you just to go astride faster. He said, Governor, I promise you, that's all I was doing. <laughs> and just on him as a, as a horse, as a physical specimen, was he not the biggest? Oh, a he was quite small feet? as a two-year-old. Uh, he was small, I mean, 15'2", but very compact and looked very much a two-year-old, mm. you know, and I thought, well, if he's no good this year, he'll never be any good. And, <laughs> um, he was quite a good three-year-old. Yes. I thought he was the best two-year-old I'd ever seen, and therefore, if he didn't win a Guineas, I would never win a Classic. And um, I just couldn't get over it when he was beaten in the guineas. I couldn't believe it, you know. Mm. Um, and it was such a shock. And um, I can remember Jeff Lewis, I, I, he, he had a nasty fall afterwards and I went to see him in hospital that day uh, in a race afterwards, he had a fall. And um, I said, uh, you know, we were so disappointed, we couldn't believe it. And um, he said, don't worry, he said, that horse is going to stay. I'm sure he'll win the derby. And actually, looking back at the guineas, it might not have been the biggest field, but it was a, a pretty good one because you were oh, beaten sure by at the time, yes. one, of the, one of the best milers we've ever seen. Who yes. eventually were, It was almost a shame, I suppose, that Mill Reef and Brigadier Gerard never got their middle yes. distance match up, wasn't yes. it? It was a shame because uh, it was due to be in the eclipse, which would have been the perfect distance over a mile and mm. a quarter um, for them to meet again. Um, but uh, it wasn't to be.